welcome back guys now after discussing about the iron deficiency anemia now in this video let's discuss about the other microcytic anemias the second microcytic anemia that i am going to discuss here is called as anemia of chronic disease okay, anemia of chronic disease so what exactly is this anemia of chronic disease so in the name itself it is there the patient is having the person is having anemia because of some chronic disease there is some chronic disease that's happening in the person and that's what is causing the anemia how it's going to cause the anemia we will discuss but what are these chronic diseases sir any disease where there is chronic inflammation in the body okay usually chronic inflammatory conditions the okay, chronic inflammatory conditions uh, like autoimmune disorders okay autoimmune disorders or even cancers okay so any condition where there is a chronic inflammatory condition in this persons they can be anemia okay usually uh, we say that anemia of chronic disease is the most common anemia it's the most common anemia in hospitalized like you know patients hospitalized patients why in hospitalized patients because usually chronic inflammatory conditions okay these patients with the chronic inflammatory conditions usually are hospital ad, uh, admitted okay so is the most common type of anemia in the hospitalized patients question is why anemia sir okay chronic inflammatory states are there so how they are going to cause anemia see any chronic inflammatory condition is going to produce acute phase reactants acute phase reactants one of the most important acute phase reactant is called as hepcidin so this hepcidin is produced by the liver now i, I have already explained you sir what hepcidin will do hepcidin is going to decrease the iron absorption decreases the iron absorption and not only that this hepcidin molecule it is going to sequestrate all the iron all the iron which is present in the blood now all this iron will be packed inside the stores i will be packed inside the liver and it will be packed inside the bone marrow macrophages okay all the iron will be stored within the cells so the blood levels of iron decreases so whenever there is chronic inflammatory conditions the iron is not available for the process of hematopoiesis is not available for the process of uh, uh, hemoglobin production so iron is there in the body but it is not available because of this hepcidin so hepcidin decreases the iron absorption true also hepcidin what it is doing it is taking all the iron which is present in the serum and it is going to be packed inside the liver and from there the iron is not going to be released out so no iron no heme without heme no hemoglobin without hemoglobin anemia sir okay so here the main culprit is this hepcidin okay its main culprit is the hepcidin the hepcidin also going to decrease erythropoietin production so erythropoietin same same stuff erythropoietin helps in rbc production hematopoiesis without erythropoietin hematopoiesis will decrease okay so anemia of chronic disease now one more important point which i want you to know is if you look the peripheral smear okay if you look the rbc under the microscope see i am discussing this anemia of chronic disease under microcytic anemias but most of the time most of the time the size of the rbcs is going to be maintained normally within the normal range that is 80 to 50 liters so most of the time the anemia of chronic disease is coming under normo cytic anemia it's a normo cytic anemia means normal size normal size of the rbcs so anemia of the chronic disease is the best answer anemia of chronic disease is which type of anemia microcytic macrocytic megaloblastic or macrocytic it is normo cytic anemia okay normo cytic anemia so what can be seen on labs so tell me what happened to ferritin levels all the iron is going to be sequestered not going to get into the pathway of hematopoiesis not involved in uh, hemoglobin production so what happened to ferritin levels ferritin levels increases because the iron is not being used up by the body all the iron whatever is there in the serum now that uh, the serum the, the serum iron is going to be moved into the stores so ferritin levels increases next what happened to tibc total iron binding capacity when you have more ferritin 
always always the ferritin is more means the tabc will go down tabc will go down Why? because you have enough stores of iron now more iron is there so the transferrin molecules okay decreases transferrin molecules decreases what happened to serum iron so serum iron also decreases serum iron also decreases next what happened to percentage saturation percentage saturation iron itself is not there okay iron itself is like you know it's not there in the plasma that's what i mean by iron itself is not available in the plasma all the iron is stored okay it's getting stored packed so what happened to the percentage saturation percentage saturation decreases because in the blood there is no iron without iron the transferrin is not going to bind with the iron so saturation of the transferrin molecules will decrease okay so percentage saturation decreases so this is how the lab is going to be uh, the laboratory values are going to be changed in anemia of chronic disease anemia of chronic disease okay and uh, even in this condition free erythrocyte protoporphyrin okay free erythrocyte protoporphyrin what happened to the erythrocyte protoporphyrin levels they are also elevated because free now protoporphyrin is free because iron is not involved in the process of heme production iron is not available for the hematopoiesis so simple protoporphyrin free protoporphyrin levels increases okay so this is the anemia of chronic disease the most important question is um, it is due to acute phase reactant called as hepcidin and it is an example of normocytic anemia that's the best answer when compared to the microcytic it's the normocytic anemia the next microcytic anemia that i want to discuss here is let me write is sideroblastic okay sideroblastic anemia okay what exactly is this sidero sidero means something like iron okay iron accumulation sideroblastic blastic means immature cells in the immature cells iron is getting accumulated so sideroblastic anemia what's the problem i have already explained you hemoglobin what exactly is hemoglobin sir hemoglobin it is made up of heme and globin okay heme and globin sir what is heme made up of heme is made up of iron and protoporphyrin okay iron is iron and protoporphyrin sir globin you know it there are two globins alpha globin chains and beta globin chain two alpha globins two beta globin chains are there so here the problem in sideroblastic anemia is with the protoporphyrin the protoporphyrin is not getting properly produced so without protoporphyrin there is no heme without heme hemoglobin is not there without hemoglobin the patient is having anemia okay so less than 13.5 grams in males less than 12.5 grams in females anemia sir now let me tell you what exactly uh, you should know regarding the protoporphyrin see here in this table i am showing you the protoporphyrin synthesis okay from the succinyl coa and glycine the succinyl coa and glycine they are going to at the end of the day get converted into say protoporphyrin the protoporphyrin synthesis is happening okay here sir look protoporphyrin is getting produced at the end of the day see in the production of this protoporphyrin there are important enzymes rate limiting enzymes are present so these rate limiting enzymes are called as ala synthase amino levulonic acid synthase okay ala ala stands for amino levulonic acid synthase so ala synthase and ala dehydratase okay amino levulonic acid dehydratase so these are the two very much important enzymes okay these are the two important enzymes which are involved in the production of our protoporphyrin protoporphyrin and one more important point is see the last step in the last step so the protoporphyrin is going to accept the iron it's going to accept the iron protoporphyrin is going to accept the iron now with the help of this enzyme called as ferrochelatase so ferrochelatase helps in binding protoporphyrin with the iron so after binding with the iron now you will have heme sir now you will have the heme so now the, what are the three important enzymes ls amino levulonic acid synthase lad amino levulonic acid dehydratase and ferrochelatase these are the three important enzymes in the production of heme okay heme now what happens so what is the problem the problem is see this sideroblastic anemia okay sideroblastic anemia occurs due to deficiency what happens if there is a deficiency of ls the amino levulonic acid synthase it is deficient from birth itself so amino levulonic acid synthase is right deficiency okay deficiency of ls so if it is deficient what happened to protoporphyrin so protoporphyrin levels are going to go down the protoporphyrin is not there 
Now protoporphyrin is not there. Iron is there, but protoporphyrin is not there. Iron is waiting in the erythroid precursors. Okay. Now imagine this is the erythroid precursor. Now it have to convert into RBC. It have to convert into RBC. Iron is ready. Okay. Iron is readily available in the mitochondria. So iron is sitting in the mitochondria to go and bind with the protoporphyrin. Okay. So the last reaction, that last reaction, ferrochelidase with the help of ferrochelidase, iron is going to bind with. Uh, iron is going to bind with the protoporphyrin. That last. So the last reaction occurs in the mitochondria. Now, if this enzyme is deficient by birth itself, okay, if this enzyme is deficient, alas, pro no protoporphyrin, without protoporphyrin, there is no heme. So, simply iron will start to accumulate inside the mitochondria and mitochondria are present. So, in the center of the cell, what do we have? Nucleus, nucleus is there. These are the blastic cells. These are the immature cells. They are not at RBCs. They are not the RBCs, sir. These are the immature cells which are present in the bone marrow. So, this is the nucleus. Now, here the whole cell is now with lot of iron which is not being used, the iron is not being used because there is no protoporphyrin. Why you know there is no protoporphyrin, this alas is deficient. Now one more important point is, I have already said to you this alas is the rate limiting enzyme, this is the rate limiting enzyme. For the functioning of this rate limiting enzyme, you require a cofactor that is called as a B6. Okay, the B6 is the cofactor for the functioning of amyloavronic acid synthase. Now if this B6 is deficient, now this alas is not going to work. If LS is not going to work, same stuff, okay, no protoporphyrin, iron will start to accumulate inside the cell in this iron laden cells, okay, the iron is there in the mitochondria and the mitochondria are surrounding the nucleus. Now, these cells are called as ring cells. These cells are called as ringed sideroblasts. These are called as the ringed sideroblasts, okay. So, now you can ask me, sir, why the patient is having vitamin B6 deficiency? What might be the reason the, the, the patient can go into vitamin B6 deficiency? Is using of an anti-tubercular medication, okay? You know, right, HRJDS, isoniazid, rifampicin, ethambutol, okay? Uh, these drugs, sir. So, if a patient is using a drug called as isoniazid, okay, the patient is using this anti-tubercular drug called as isoniazid, that isoniazid, is the one which causes the B6 deficiency. If there is B6 deficiency, this amyloavonic acid synthase is not going to work. If it is not working, that will cause this sideroblastic anemia. Okay, sideroblastic anemia, ane uh, hemoglobin production is affected because of no protoporphyrin. Protoporphyrin is not getting produced. Apart from this, what are the other causes? Uh, what are the other causes that uh, one can have for development of this sideroblastic anemia is Alcoholism, okay, alcoholism and lead poisoning. Sir, alcoholism and lead poisoning, do you know what they will do? Alcoholism directly targets the mitochondria. Okay, alcoholism will cause the damage to the mitochondria. If the mitochondria are damaged, okay, if the mitochondria are damaged, do you think protoporphin production is going to occur? Protoporphyrin production occurs in the mitochondria, sir. So, if al alcoholism, mitochondria are damaged, if mitochondria are damaged, protoporphyrin. Okay, protoporphyrin levels goes down. If protoporphyrin is not there, no heme, without heme, no hemoglobin, without hemoglobin, anemia, sir. Now, lead poisoning. Lead poisoning will inhibit, okay, LAD. Okay, abmyloalavronic acid dehydrogenase, the second enzyme. Also, the ferrochelidase. Ferrochelidase. So, lead is going to inhibit LAD and ferrochelidase. So, what happens? So, both again same. Okay, may, uh, mostly with this, sir. Mostly with this, uh, the patient who is having LAD deficiency, again protoporphyrin is not produced. Without protoporphyrin, no heme. Simple, without protoporphyrin, no heme. Without heme, no hemoglobin. Done, sir. Next, ferrochelidase. Ferrochelidase is the one which uh, involves in the last step. Okay, last step. What is the last step? You know it. It's the binding of iron with the it's a binding, see, it's a binding of iron with the protoporphyrin. So, when the ferrochelidase is deficient, do you think iron and protoporphyrin will they bind? No. Without binding, there is no heme. Without heme, you know it. Okay, without heme, there is no hemoglobin and anemia, sir. So, this is the one of the reason. Okay, alcoholism and lead poisoning can, can lead to sideroblastic anemia. So, how the cells are going to be, let me show you. See, this is how these blastic cells are. These are the immature cells. Now, what you can see is this blue color, right? So, what are those blue color? So, this blue color is nothing but iron, the blue color is nothing but iron, the iron that is getting accumulated, okay. So, in the form of a ring, the iron that is getting accumulated in the form of a ring, so that is why it is called as a ringed sideroblast. 
Okay, so now how the labs are going to be changed, how the labs are going to be changed in a patient who is having sideroblastic anemia. Let me put it this way. So, labs. So, in sideroblastic anemia, what, are, what is the problem? Sir? It's a protoporphyrin problem, it's a protoporphyrin related issue. But iron is there. So, iron is simply coming and staying in the erythroblasts, or I should say the immature cells. Iron is coming and getting simply staying there over there. Now, this iron is a very bad thing. I have explained to you. The iron can form the free radicals. This, I, this free radicals can actually damage the cells. This free radicals can actually cause the damage to the cells. Sir. So, unnecessarily, these immature cells are getting damaged. They will undergo lysis, breakdown. So, iron is going to leak back. Iron is going to leak back into the blood. Okay, iron will leak back into the blood. So, more number of destruction, more the destruction, more iron is going to leak. There is no problem with the iron. So, what happened to ferritin levels? Ferritin levels actually increases, sir. Why? Right? Because no one is using the ferritin. Okay, ferritin levels increases. What happened to the TIBC, total iron binding capacity? Whenever ferritin increases, TIBC goes down. What happened to the serum iron? So, serum iron increases. So, more iron is going to come into the serum. Why? Right? Because the cells are dying. Because of the accumulation of iron, the cells are dying and the accumulated iron is going to leak back into the cytoplasm. So, serum iron increases. So, what happened to the percentage SAT? So, percentage saturation, more iron is available, more iron is there in the serum. So, more iron will again bind with the transferrin. So, percentage saturation increases. So, in sideroblastic anemia, the percentage saturation increases, serum iron increases, TABC decreases and ferritin levels are decreases. So, ferritin levels are decreases. Okay. So, what are the causes? Causes include B6 deficiency, alcoholism, lead poisoning. Lead poisoning. And what you will see, ringed sideroblasts are going to be seen. So, ringed sideroblasts are going to be seen. So, with this, we have done with anemia of chronic disease as well as sideroblastic anemia. Well, the important point in the sideroblastic anemia, which you should never ever forget, is so the two important enzymes, ELAS and ELAD, aminolavulonic acid synthase and aminolavulonic acid dehydratase. These enzymes. B6 is the cofactor of L, like aminolavulonic acid synthase. What is the last step? The last step is the fusion of iron with the fusion of iron with protoporphyrin with the help of ferrochelatase. The ferrochelatase is inhibited by lead poisoning, lead poisoning. ELAD, aminolavulonic acid dehydratase is inhibited by lead poisoning. Okay, so these are some important points which I want you to know regarding sideroblastic anemia and never forget about this image. Ringed sideroblast. So here whatever you are seeing in the blue color, it's nothing but, okay, it's nothing but the iron, iron. So what is the stain used for the iron? It's a Prussian blue. Okay, Prussian blue or pearl stain. Okay, Prussian blue are pearl stains, sir. So, these are the stains used for iron. Okay, let me just erase here. Pearls blue. Okay, pearl stain. So, with this, the sideroblastic anemia and as, uh, as well as the anemia of chronic disease are done. In the next video, we'll discuss about the next microcytic anemia that is left over, that is thalassemia. Hope the video is helpful. See you in the next video. Thank you.